Okay, um, I wanted to make one clarification uh, from my last lecture. Uh, I wrote load. This is actually life. Um, L10 is measured in hours. So this is the life of a component in hours, uh, whereas these are your two load conditions. This is your axle speed and so uh, and all of those other components are the same. So um, my apologies, I should have written life instead of load. I just got really excited talking about bearings. Um, I guess I just, just really love things that spin. Um, so what we're gonna be talking about in this video is I'm gonna give you a simple design problem and we're gonna figure out how to pick a bearing from it. Okay. Um, so I guess let's begin. So with simple design problem, you've got a shaft. On that shaft, maybe you have two gears uh, rotating in each other. You may have some torque load, you may have some radial load, you may have some whatever it is that's between these two. Um, we're gonna go ahead and assume though that this is a journal bearing. Nope, nope. We'll just pick two ball bearings. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on journal bearings later. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out what is your radial load. Okay. Your radial load is, if we draw our free body diagram here, you have some amount of force being exerted by this gear, some amount of force being exerted by this gear, so I can call this FG1, FG2, um, and then you've got your FB2 and your FB1, okay? Uh, FB1 is your radial load. That, that's really it. Um, if you have any horizontal load this way that's being carried by your bearing, uh, that's a thrust load. Um, this this would I would call this T B1 for thrust or F T1 um, would probably be even better than F B1. Um, but we're going to assume there is no uh, thrust load here. Uh, thrust load calculations can be a little ugly. Uh, there are ways of uh, figuring out what's called the equivalent load. Um, what happens in ball bearings is that if you've got uh, a deep groove ball bearing like this uh, and you exert, so here, you exert a force like this on both sides, uh, it causes this to kind of grind in uh, to the ball bearing at those points. Uh, and there, it can cause more damage in thrust than it does radially. It's designed to handle it radially. Um, all the lubrication is up here and down here. So um, thrust can be really damaging to ball bearings. Um, I mean, they can handle it, but it, it does uh, create what's called the equivalent loading, which is basically where you take the two vectors and you sum them to equal one vector. Um, that. Uh, and you figure out your equivalent loading and you use that equivalent loading thrust plus radial loading uh, to figure out how much loading is actually being done on the ball bearing. Um, and it can reduce the life, but that's, it's just a simple way of doing it. Uh, we're gonna, uh, you know what, for the, for the sake of this, let's assume that there is FT1 um, and only one of the bearings handles thrust, okay? So we'll go ahead and say that um, FG1 is equal to, uh, maybe this is 2,500 pounds and maybe FG2 is equal to, uh, 3,500 pounds. Okay. And then, so, so now you have, um, 6,000 pounds being carried between the two. Let's go ahead and assume that FB1 takes the brunt of that, uh, with 4,000 pounds and FB2 is located a little bit distance away and uh, it only carries 2,000 pounds. 
Okay, so we have two different bearings we need to pick. We know that FT1, let's say FT1 maybe, maybe there is a horizontal force exerted uh, by one of the gears. Um, F, G, T, well, nah, FG3. I'm just gonna call it FG3. The horizontal force exerted by um, this. So, make them point at each other. We'll say FT1 is equal to FG3, and that's equal to 2,000 pounds. Okay? So the equivalent load that's being carried by bearing one is the equivalent of having our FT1 and our FB1. So this is our F equivalent on the bearing. Your equivalent load is equal to square root of 2,000 squared plus 4,000 squared, uh, which is equal to, I pull out my phone calculator. Um, Two thousand squared, four thousand squared. This is equal to forty-four seventy-two uh, pounds. So we're going to go ahead and use that in our bearing calculations now. Okay. So we have forty-four seventy-two pounds. It's being exerted. Uh, now we'll use this formula here: CP C over P to the E. Um, we're going to be using a ball bearing. So F E Q B one is equal to 4471. I'll go ahead and erase this. Okay. Now let's say, what do we want? Well, we have a number of, of design variables that we get to pick now. What is L10? What do we want that lifespan to be? What do we want the speed to be? What is the speed of this shaft gonna be? Okay, if we know these two things, and now we know what, uh, what this is, is the C or P? I believe this is P. This is P, yes. Okay. So we know what P is for both of them. Um, really then what we're looking for is the C value and that's it. So, um, yeah, let's, let's do it. Okay, so uh, let's pick an L10. Uh, let's say we want L10 to equal one million hours. Okay, what is a million hours? Well, a million hours is uh, 41,667 days. Um, it's 114 years. Okay, I mean, that's fun. Uh, so a million hours is a lot of time. Uh, it'll last probably longer than our lifespans. Unless we make some major advances in medicine. For N, here we're picking the speed of our shaft and RPM. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that it's rotating at 60 uh, RPM. That's fast shaft. Maybe this is some kind of a a generator or something, okay? And then for P, we have our P here is equal to 4471 pounds. Uh, and then we also have our P equal to 2000 pounds, okay? So we have two different bearings to design. So now what we'll do is we're gonna go ahead and rearrange this formula uh, and solve for the C value, okay? So having picked a lifespan, uh, you have L10 times 60 times N 
divided by 10 to the sixth is equal to C over P to the E. If you take the natural log of both sides, L10 times 60N over 10 to the sixth uh, is equal to E times the natural log of C over P. You divide this by E. Um, 1 over E. Oh, I guess we could have done this a little simpler. Dang it, I took my natural log too soon. Okay, so L10 times 60N divided by 10 to the 6th to the 1 over E power is equal to C over P. And then with that, we're solving for C. So P times L10 times 60N divided by 10 to the 6th to 1 over E is equal to C. And if we find this value, then we need to know this. That'll tell us what the minimum C value is uh, for our component. Okay, so plugging this in for bearing 1. For B1, our P value is 4471, L10 is a million, uh, N value is 60 RPM. So plugging all of these values in and we get lots of fun, super duper fun time. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see. And then here, E is a uh, for a ball bearing. It's 10 to the third for roller bearings. Do ba do, ga do 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 do. And this is equal to, for B1, our C is equal to 68, 523 pounds. For B2, our C is equal to 30,000. 652 pounds, okay? So that's great. Now, oftentimes bearing manufacturers will sell based on these C values, your dynamic capacity values. So we're gonna go find what the dynamic capacity of some variables are. So let me quickly switch my screen. Um, Look at that transition. Uh, here's the, the ball bearings that I said, just looking at amroll.com. Um, not suggesting that you always use this. We could also look at Granger. Uh, but Amroll gives you your dynamic capacity right here for your um, bearings. And we're looking for a bearing that has a dynamic capacity uh, of 68,000 and one that has a dynamic capacity of 30,000. Okay, uh, now if you look at this, the uh, this, this has some massive bearings. Look at look at the size of these things uh, 15.75 outer diameter. Your bore, which is that's the shaft diameter, is 10 inches. A 10 inch diameter on a shaft is is pretty massive. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess that's, that's what they're selling. Um, 
So this is a yeah, this is a little bit a little bit bigger than what I would want to look for. I'm gonna go ahead to go to uh, Granger and look up some uh, ball bearings. Ooh, would you like to take a survey? Oh, dang. So we're gonna look at some radial ball bearings. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds. You've got single series. Uh, your book does a, a pretty good job of explaining what the difference is between some of these, but you will see that there is just a ton of different kinds. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the SKF single row um, series. Uh, now, the kind of, of shield that I like is I like it to be uh, double double shielded, double sealed. Um, and what that means is that you just don't have, uh, you don't have the ability for, for lubrication to get out. Um, oops, don't want this. Now what we need to know for our, our uh, we have a couple of different features here. We've got, um, let's see, this is NTN. Gonna go ahead and look at different kinds of bearings. I think we actually have to click on these to find what their bearing load rating is. Uh, but yeah, so then it's just a matter of finding what's your bore diameter, which is your inner diameter, what's your outer diameter. So if we're dealing with a shaft that's one inch, maybe, um, we'll go ahead and look at this bearing here. We may have to pick a different kind of bearing if this isn't enough. Um, hopefully Granger will give us this information. Let's see, dynamic load capacity is nowhere near where we need it to, to be. Um, unless I did my math wrong, which, I mean, that's possible. We also may need to, to reduce our L value. This, uh, <laughs> this is not going to survive for, for a million hours. Um, ooh, needle bearings. Oh, dang, I'm getting sucked into bearing looking. Uh, but this is, this is ultimately what you would do then, is you'd have to parse through, look at different kinds of bearings. Uh, you'd for looking for a million cycles, you're probably looking at a high life bearing. Um, so maybe not an SKF. SKF can be pretty cheap. Um, but that's that's basically the design process here. Uh, now, if, you know, if we are looking at um, Man, we may need to design for a lot less time. I may have to do that. Instead of a million hours, maybe only a thousand hours. Um, and with a thousand hours, uh, then some of these bearings would be able to, to handle that. It's like if I go, uh, maybe instead of a single row, we go with a double row um, ball bearing. Radial ball bearing, give me double row, give me double row. And I can't find the double rows. They're only metric. Dang it, metric system. Uh, fine. We'll go ahead and go with the uh, 25 millimeter. You'll notice these are substantially more expensive. Oops, not adding that to card. I'm gonna go look at it, look at the characteristics of it. Uh, mostly looking for that dynamic load capacity. What? That sucks. Uh, lubrication is grease. Cage material, PA66. Uh, nitrile rubber steel. <sighs> Whatever. I think I didn't do myself a service when I went with double sealed. I should have gone with double, double shielded. Um, uh, ooh, in stock at Omaha. 
That's fantastic. Um, okay, so we're gonna go with, um, maybe instead of having a one inch diameter bore, maybe with these bearing diameters, maybe I have to go to two inch diameter. So go ahead and gonna grab a double shielded. Double shielded tends to work better for applications where you may have something hitting the bearings. Um, so it's not, it's not quite as good as a seal, but you'll see the dynamic load capacity increases. So if we went for, uh, <clears throat> if we went for a lifespan of only a thousand hours instead of a million hours, um, this, this would serve our needs. Uh, so do everything we need it to do. So this, we would pick this bearing. This would be good for bearing one. Uh, now it is two inch inner bore, uh, almost. And then the outer diameter is almost four inches. So it's, it's pretty big and it does cost 141 pounds, but $141, but, uh, yeah, you can make it work. So, uh, this is, I mean, this is what we did. We designed the bearing, we picked it and we're good. We figured it out for this problem. Go us. Uh, your problem for uh, this week is going to be to design a shaft based on some loading conditions I'm giving you. Your problem for next week is going to be designing a bearing uh, and actually picking a bearing uh, using design uh, qualities that I'm going to give you. So uh, I will see you. I'm going to post another lecture later this week on journal bearings. And we will, I guess I'll see you then. So... Bye-bye.